Amen. Amen. So let's get into our message here today. So it's part five. Next week is the last week. I'm starting to get a little bit nervous because I'm starting to think, all right, we've, this whole series has been about change. It's been about you changing, uh, especially having the power to change. There's all kinds of things that we wish we could change about our life, but then we end up not being able to. And we kind of think that maybe I can't change. Uh, I'm not on the power, the ability to change this habit or this thing. And I know me and myself, I've been working on changing a few things. You know, I'm not going to the petrol station as much and I've cut my calories down and I've almost got another shirt that I fit into. So I'll be able to have two shirts for Sunday mornings. And, but that's taken me like five weeks to get there. And, and I'm the one up here teaching on it. So I, I'm, like, I'm like, okay, let's make sure. I just really want to make sure that you guys get every opportunity that you can to, to change, to change something in your life that you want to change. And, and so this is, this is part five. This is about winning. So the question I have for you is, how many people in here, this is a dumb question, love winning? This is a question that pastors uh, ask before they preach. They say, oh, hey, how many people just absolutely love to win? Well, obviously everyone's hand should go up. Everyone should love it. Yes, absolutely. It's not like you wake up in the morning or it's not like you come out on stage and forget to turn your mic pack on and you go, yes, I'm so happy to be losing in that situation, you know, amazing. I don't know if anyone has ever spilt wet coffee grounds on a tile floor, impossible to clean up. Absolutely. The, the serviette just smears it around. You've got to get the vacuum cleaner out. And I did that a couple years ago. I still remember it. I remember the trauma of it. And it, it's, it's not like when that happened, I thought, man, it feels so good to start my day with this, with just a loss. It's amazing, you know. Um, I absolutely, absolutely love losing. Now, we all love to win. We, we want to win. And then on top of that, on top of winning, some of us are extra competitive. So this is something where, hey, if you're married or you're with or, or visiting, or you know, you know, a super competitive person, raise, raise your hand. So you're not the competitive person. Yeah. But but you're with the competitive person. Yeah, your life is sometimes horrible, you know. When they switch on that competitive nature, you know, it's, it's bad. So I'm a pretty competitive person, but I choose when to turn it on. So uh, a couple years back, I went and played paintball with some other pastors in the Cape Town area. And I thought, this is not a good time for me to be super competitive, you know. <laughs> this, this is not, this because this won't end well. This is going to be really bad, you know. So, so there's, there's competitive people that make life really fun. There's people that, you know, that love to win. And, you know, that, that's all of us. And that makes life really good. Um, now, I just want you to know that if you're one of those people, especially if you're a competitive person, and especially if you just love winning at all costs, I want you to know that you're actually biblically justified. So those of you, you can actually say, uh, you know, to your partner, your friend, your spouse, to whoever, you can say, yeah, the Bible says that I can be this way. And Paul actually says it in 1 Corinthians here. And he says in, in chapter 9, he says, Don't you realize that in this race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize, so run to win. Paul doesn't say, you know, you get a participation medal and you're all good. He, he doesn't say, I'd let, you know, someone else win. He says, run to win. So Paul's saying, I want you to, you know, to go out there and, and just be competitive. So those of you that are that way, you've got permission to do that. But as we talk about, you know, Paul, we're going to really focus on winning here. And I just, I want to be transparent with you guys. I've rewritten this message three times. One of them was at 1 a.m. last night. One of them was this morning at 5 a.m. And the reason that I do that is, is I always ask myself the question of why does this matter to you? You know, I can say all the Bible things and say all the words and we can bring the, the, the verses up and, and there's a kind of a tagline in this message and it sounds nice, you know, but really, but it doesn't matter. And, and the first couple of times that I made a go at this, when I asked myself that question, I couldn't answer it. And, and this morning, I feel like I, I can answer it, but I really hope that that comes across to you. I hope there's and authenticity that comes across to you. And especially if you're not a Christ follower, you, you know, you don't know a lot about Jesus. I hope that this is something that you can take away and say, all right, it, it actually does matter in my life. I can see where it matters. And so I want you to ask yourself, for, for you, because it's different for everyone, what does winning at life mean to you? So that, that could be, you know, you've got the job that you want. That could be that you have the house and the kids. 
That, that could even be something as simple as, like, for me, like, I got on stage and my microphone was turned on. That's a huge win for me on a Sunday morning. Um, but what's it mean for you to be winning at life? You know, and, and this is something that um, it, maybe it's harder to answer, especially if your life is comfortable. Because a lot of us live very comfortable lives. We, we live lives where we have what we need. We've got food in the cupboard. We've got clothes. Who got up this morning? Me and Lifa used to play a thing called the thankful game. Who got up this morning and opened your, your sock drawer and said, Hey, I've got 10 pairs of socks to choose from. I'm so blessed. My life's incredibly abundant. You know, probably none of us. So it, when we have plenty, when our, me, our, our needs are met, when we're taken care of, it's kind of hard to define what it means to be winning at life because we kind of already feel like we are or it doesn't trigger that we're not. So, but it's actually easier when we define what losing at life looks like. These are the moments that you really feel it. Th these are the moments where you can say, I was losing at life when this happened. I was losing at life when, when I lost this job or this relationship uh, fell apart or, or you know, if, if you're trying to get your finances together, but you just, things just keep breaking. You know, I talked with you guys about my Feroza and that relay switch a couple weeks ago. It's the car of faith where I don't know it's always going to turn on. Still haven't fixed it. It's car of faith. I'm going to keep riding that thing out. But the, the la or this week I had Linton with me. And many of you guys know Pastor Linton, and, and his daughter uses a, a little machine that kind of helps her breathe. And so he says, hey, his car's parked behind my gate. And he says, hey, it's, I need to get home. And I said, okay, cool, let's go. We get in the parking lot. Guess what? The Feroza decides to do that thing where it doesn't start. Linton looks over at me and he says, really? And I, you know, fix the part, you know, Chris. But it did get started, and I, I did get him home. But, but it, it's easier for you to define what it is what it looks like to be losing at life. You can define what it looks like to be losing in your finances. You can define what it looks like to be losing in your relationships, especially. You can define what it looks like when you're losing, I mean, spiritually, if you're trying to kind of grow spiritually and, and you're trying to just let yourself have a little bit more of a connection with God, but then all of a sudden these, these things happen in life, someone's mean to you or, or whatever it is, and, and then you kind of end up just, you know, falling off. But it's really, really easy to know when things aren't working together for you. That's something that's easy to do. So if we're talking about winning, but yet it's easier to define what losing looks like, and it's easier to see all the areas in our life where we are losing rather than to see all the areas in, in our life where we are winning, then we, we have a problem. So our, here, here's the problem with, with us, okay? We want to win at life. You want to win financially, meaning you want to have money in the, in the bank account. You want to have money in your savings account. You don't want to have a ton of credit card debt, those things. You want to be able to put food on the table. You want to win in your family. You'd love to have, you know, your kids or your family just come to church and be all beautiful and everything, you know, looking great. You know, my, my wife came in this morning and said, if we get a phone call from the police saying that we've abused our children at home, I didn't hit any of them. They just screamed all morning. You know, we, we, we don't want that. We want to be winning where they're all perfect and wonderful. And, and, and we, we want to win everywhere. We just want things to click into place. But yet, we, we don't think about it when they are clicking into place. And then when things aren't coming into place, you know, it's like now I definitely feel like I'm losing here. And then when you're losing at something, what is it that you do? Well, what you do when you're losing, when a situation is overtaking you... That, that kind of defines the problem that we have. See, the, the problem for most of us is you're, you're trying too hard. Now, I don't expect you to just immediately understand this here. But when, when something is not working in your life, then what do you do? You try hard to fix it. If, if something's not coming together, you try hard to put it together. And so if, if something... So you kind of have this equation of if I try harder, then it gets better. So trying harder equals getting better. And, and what that does for, for us here is, is as we look at that, that 
and Philippe's going to put it on the screen for us, that trying hard and getting better thing is, is we apply this to everything. And, and we think that, that if I just try a little bit harder, then I can make this situation better. You know, if you're dieting, if you're like, man, if I just try harder not to overeat or not to, to I mean, my son Leafa has this problem where he can't gain weight. I can take a deep breath and put on a kilogram <laughs> just of, of air. And he's learning that, you know what, if he wants to get, you know, put on size, wants to have, you know, a 1% body fat instead of a 0% body fat, then he needs to try harder at eating. So, so as this sits right here, it doesn't seem like much of a problem. It actually kind of seems like it makes sense. Something's not working, try harder at it. Don't give up, try. Just keep going, just keep going, keep trying. But the problem with this, and it is a problem, is that it, it, it kind of insinuates that there's something that I can do about my situation. And, and when we start to feel like, you know what, I can fix my situation. I can do something to better my own situation. Then, then we get into this thing that I've kind of given a little bit of a term to, and it's, it's called a, a theology of trying. And, and as I, I called it this, this theology, what, kind of what I mean by that is it's like your belief system. It's the thing that kind of guides you. Like it, it's, it's the reason why you feel like you should try harder. You should have a better work ethic. You know, you're not performing well at work, so you need to just try harder and do better at work. Now, I don't know if anyone's grown up with parents who have said things like, it's not good enough, try harder or, or do better. Or you heard that in sports. But see, that, that's a big problem. This theology of trying, this idea of if I want my finances to be better, I'm going to try and save more. If I, if I want my, my marriage to be better, then I'm going to try and spend more time with my spouse. If I want, you, know, you just take whatever it is in your life, because there is something, there's something in you that you wish was better. Whether it's, it, whether it's, it's what you eat and has something to do with your health, or, or whether it's other habits that you want to break. Or whether it's an availability that you want to have for family, whatever it is. Even if it's something simple, where you, you just want to remember to, to shut the refrigerator door all the way. And you just can't. But you know what? That's starting to aggravate your spouse. So, man, I just need, need to try harder there. Whatever we want to be better, we think we just try harder. And that's, that's a theology of trying. Because it, it's, a, it's a belief system that we're taking on. But it's got a problem. There's, there's two problems with this. It implies two dangerous lies to you. If you, if you take on this theology of try, try harder, try harder, try harder, there's two lies that you're taking on. One is that trying harder actually equals getting better. Because that, that's not necessarily true. And it's not necessarily right. And the reason that I can say that is how many of you have already been trying so hard to change something, to break a habit, to create a new habit, and here we are six months, one year, two years, three years later, and you're still trying, and the habit is still there. The thing that you want to change, guess what? It's, it's still there. It does, that's a lie. Trying harder does not always get better. The second one is, is this, I'm not enough. It's, it's up to me. And see, what this is, is that this is a, this is a pride thing. <clears throat> For you to think, and, and we, we learn this at different seasons in our life. I learned this through going through a, a hard, you know, really, really hard season in life. This, this like, I can do this if I'm just putting a little more effort into it. And what that is, is that that's I. I can do it. I'm enough. Meaning that I possess in me with no other help, with no other higher being, with no other thing, I possess in me enough to change my situation, to break the habit, to create the new habit. It's me. I possess that. Therefore, I will try harder. I, I'm trying to connect with you guys. I want you to, to, to see that. That I, Actually, I want you to feel it. If you're just if you're just wondering, like, why can't I ever win at this? Why can't I ever break this habit or start a new habit? Why can't, why? What, what is wrong with me? Well, it goes back to the initial problem of you're, you're trying too hard. And as you're trying, you're taking on this theology of trying. And as you take on that theology, you're taking on a little bit of pride where you're like, hey, I possess everything I need to do this. It's all on me. I can do it. And I believe if I just keep doing it, it'll get better. But it doesn't. 
And so when we take on this, this theology of trine, what I've come to find is that this theology of trine, it's actually a demonstration of how toxic our relationship is between ourself and our perception of self-improvement. So if you're believing in this, this theology of trying, do better, try harder, do better, it's a demonstration of how toxic, toxic is bad, okay? We all know that. But your relationship with yourself, that, that's an important relationship. So K- Casey and I have this thing that we like to think of. There's like your relationship with God, your relationship with yourself, then your relationship with your spouse or your partner, and then your relationship with your family, and then your relationship, you know, and the triangle gets wider and wider at the bottom. But up there at the very top is your relationship with yourself, and it's how you perceive self-improvement. And, and this theology of trying, it's actually demonstrating how toxic this is, and it's actually kind of poisoning you. And so I, that's what I hope to change today. I hope today that, that you are able to walk out of here and you're able to say, you know what? I made the decision today to stop trying with this, with this, with whatever that thing is in you that you want to change, that, that you feel like you can't bring change to. I, today I'm making a decision that I give up trying. So in order to illustrate that, I want to talk about a guy named Paul. So one, once again, we go into Paul, and once again, Paul has, has written a letter. And, and Paul, for those of you that don't know, was, was the, the missionary. He used to be called Saul. Jesus came, struck him blind, um, spoke with him. Uh, and it was like Jesus you know, came down out of heaven, hit Saul. Saul was on his way to persecute Christians and, and all that stuff. And he has this amazing experience with Christ. And then he gets called in a, in a very ironic way to go and take the gospel to people that, that were Gentiles, meaning they weren't Jewish people. So you have like Peter, one of the 12 disciples. This probably has nothing to do with any of this, but just so you know. Peter's one of the 12. Peter gets like, he gets to go preach to the, the Jewish people, which is like great. They're prim, they're proper. That's kind of like the clean people, and then Paul gets sent out to talk and, and send the gospel to the, everyone that wasn't Jewish, meaning that they were kind of seen as, as below. And so in doing that, Paul ends up spreading the gospel across you know, a lot of the world. He ends up writing the majority of what we put together as, as our New Testament. And so Paul has a church in Corinth. And this church in Corinth, he's writing these letters to them, and, and he writes, and, he, and as he's talking about this here, he starts to kind of unpack some language that they understand. And this has to do with winning, and it has to do with trying. It also has to do with purpose and identity, but we'll get there. So we read this at the beginning, but Paul says, Do you not know that in a race, all the runners, they run their very best to win, but only one is going to receive the prize? To one, one winner. You run the race in a way that you may seize the prize and make it yours. So Paul, he's, he's writing a letter to a church in Corinth. And he's saying, okay, you're going to run in a way that you seize the prize. Run in a way that you win. So he's trying to encourage them, trying to get them to do this. And then he goes on in the next verse, in verse 25. And he says, now every athlete who goes into training and then competes in the games is disciplined. That's Usually the case, when you compete on a professional level, you've got some discipline so that you could get there. You know, discipline in sleep and eating and on training and all that. So he's saying you're disciplined and you exercise self-control in all things. They do it. Now, he's saying they do all of those things. Talking about the athletes. They, they go through all of that. It's actually a 10-month period of dieting and preparation and they go through all that just so they get a bunch of leaves put on their head and then those leaves that crown it's going to wither away and die and so Paul is saying they do all this for a a, a crown that's going to just wither away and die but we we do it for this imperishable crown that cannot wither and cannot die and then Paul he, he goes on and in the next verse in 26 so he says so because we do this for a greater reason, he says, run with purpose in every step. I'm not, and he, then he goes on to say, like, I'm not just shadow boxing. You know, he's not just boxing at the air. I don't know if anyone here is a member of Virgin Active and can I walk. If you are, I apologize if this ends up being you. But there's a guy in there that just 
just boxes the air, I don't, and I can't figure him out. And Paul is saying, I'm not just shadow boxing. I'm not just in a corner somewhere punching at the air. He says, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified because Paul understands the level of, of accountability. So now let's jump over to uh, 1 Timothy. This is a letter that Paul wrote to Timothy, which is one of his disciples. And, and Tim, he tells Timothy some advice. Don't waste time arguing over godless ideas and wives' tales. You know, no one in here uh, spends any time on Facebook looking up weird stuff and spreading rumors and you know, getting into all of that stuff. So, of course, this doesn't apply to any of you guys. But there are people out there that, that do that, that get into the... The wives' tell. So it says, instead, train yourself to be godly. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better. Promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. So let me ask you this question here. And if you see, I, I try and actually use this to interact with you guys. Do you see the, the words that are in yellow? Like train, training, training. It's kind of a theme that's coming up there. So what, what is the word that you did not hear? The, the word that you didn't hear in any of this is, is trying. So Paul didn't say, I want you to try and win. I want you to try and prepare yourself spiritually. I want you to try. You know, he didn't talk about trying. The, the word that we heard Paul say over and over and again is the word training. So it's, it's not trying, it's training. So this is the point in this message where I kind of make... Uh, a leap. I take kind of liberties here to make a leap um, into using some vocabulary that's like specific for this message here. And it, it's not bad, but if you want to win at life, so to, to win at life is to stop trying and to start training. So I, I'm a, I love math. I love chemistry. I did really well in chemistry. And, and I, I thought, okay, this is a good formula because Paul never says to try. Instead, he says to train. When I look at my life and I see the things that I'm still trying to do and I, can know, and I still haven't beaten those things, then okay, obviously that doesn't work. So, you know, let me try what Paul is doing. Paul's saying to train yourself spiritually, train yourself in the ways of God, train yourself and be disciplined. Okay, so maybe if I stop trying and instead I start training, then I can win at life. That, that's how I got to that point there. By, by, by sort of just a process of walking through that journey. And so for, for, for Paul here, Paul, see, Paul understands this. And what Paul's doing is something incredibly clever. Because Paul is actually writing to this, this church in Corinth. And it just so happens that Paul is actually speaking to athletes. And he's speaking to these athletes that know the difference between trying and training. Because a, a little history here. Corinth is this little town. It's actually kind of a big city, and it's in Greece. And in Greece, every four years, they would have this thing that we still do today called the Olympic Games. So every four years, they have the Olympic Games there. And then every two years, they have this thing called the, the Isthmian Games, and that happens every two years. And one of the, the, the interesting things about this, just doing a little bit of research on it, is that, you know, they, they did running, they did wrestling, they did, you know, all these activities. I think poetry reading was also even an event in this. Uh, but but they, they did running. They ran naked. And, you know, I just, there's nothing spiritual to that. I saw that as, you know, logistically hard or weird. So they, they ran naked. And, and they did it because it, they wanted to display the, the magnificent body, and they didn't want to have any, like, any wind resistance, you know, and so I, I just, yeah, I just thought that was weird, you know, so, but what I can tell you about, about this, about the, this Isthmian Games is one of the, the things that they did was they, they wrestled, there was wrestling in this, and these wrestlers, they, they devoted nine to ten months to getting ready for this, so they're like these athletes that Paul's talking about. Be disciplined. Don't try. Instead, train, and they dedicated a lot of time and effort into it, and there's actually proof that these wrestlers would actually train with lions, that they would train with wild animals, with wrestling them. I just thought, like, man, that, that, is, that will really make... A man out of you there. Definitely a process of elimination happens through, <laughs> happens through that. So if you're even just in the games, you know, you've already, 
you know, conquered a, you know, a lion. But so, so what, what Paul is making a distinction of here that they get, because this is their, their time. This is when they're alive. This is, these are the things that they go through. When Paul's writing to them, the, the, his, the words are real here. The Bible's real. It's, it's, sometimes it's metaphor, sometimes it's not. But Paul, Paul's wanting to make sure that the church in Corinth understands this. And, and here's the best way to put it. Remember the wrestlers, they train with lions. Is, is this trying will get, you, will get you eaten by a lion, but training will allow you to conquer the beast. See, see that, that diff- just that little bit of a difference there? See, see, trying will get you eaten by the lion. Trying will get you eaten by your, uh, your addiction to pornography. Trying will, will, will get you eaten up by your addiction to pills or to drugs. Trying is what's going to get you eaten up when you're sitting in traffic and the taxis keep cutting you off. And, and it's not just you getting frustrated there. Now you're taking your frustration home and you're taking it out on your wife or on your kids or on your husband or whoever it is. See, trying is going to eat you up inside. You're not going to conquer that beast, that, that change that you want to make in your life. It, it's a beast. That's why it's still a change that you need to make because you haven't been able to conquer it. That means it's pretty hard. That, that means it's, that, that's the beast in your life and trying's not going to do it. Trying is going to let you get eaten. But training, training is what allows you to conquer the beast. Now, I, I want to give you a definition here. The definition between trying and training in our context here is this. Trying is an attempt to change with minimal commitment and an excuse clause. So let me kind of put this into context for you. When you're trying, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, like minimal effort. You know, it's like I'm trying, I use this example all the time, I'm trying to drive into Pinelands past the BP garage and then, you know, and not go inside and get a candy bar or whatever. And I, I'm doing pretty good, you know, got an extra shirt that fits, but... But it's easy for me to be like, you know, I think I feel the, the tire pressure on my back right tires is a little bit low. Maybe I should just pull in there and get a little bit of air, you know? Or, or yeah, my, you know, the fuel, t- I think gas prices are going to go up. Maybe I should just pull in and get, get some petrol. Ah, right, well, you know, since I'm here, I'm just going to go in and get a water because obviously I got to hydrate, you know? And, and then I wake up sitting, you know, in the car and there's, there's Coke and there's candy and there's all that stuff. So it's like when you're trying at life, it, you're, you're making an attempt, but it's with minimal commitment. Because see, with trying, we always want to give ourselves a way out. It's like I, I'm trying to eat better, but, but I, I've got a way out because there's these celebrations and because I don't want to you know, make my, my uh, partner you know, just kind of like eat the way that I eat. Or man, I just showed up at work and there were donuts and you know, my boss told me he was going to fire me if I didn't eat one. You know, so we make all these you know, excuses. But, but what I want you to take away from this is, is, is this is why you can get eaten by the beast. Because trying is minimal commitment. And there's always an excuse clause, which means that anytime it gets hard, what's one of the first things you think? Okay, it's hard, so I can just start tomorrow. I failed today, I can start over tomorrow. Now, when we compare that to training, the definition that I have for training is it's, it's a wholehearted, all-in-one commitment to achieve a specific result. So in training, you're putting your whole heart into it, you're committed to it. Now, what, what, what would that look like? Just practically, there's three things here. In, in training, you, one, you're going to get the gear. So if you're, if you're running, you're going to get the shoes, you're going to get the, the water belt, you're going to get all that stuff. If you're lifting weights, you know, like I've been doing, I've had to get knee sleeves because both my knees are now broken and I've got a a belt you put around your back so that, you know, your back doesn't, you know, do funny things when you're doing squats and stuff. And all of a sudden now I'm carrying around like a bag in the gym, like a a gym bag because I've got all this, this gear. I've invested in it, invested in it so much that I've, I've bought this stuff. But then also you create a game plan. So there's intention to it. So you've got a program. You've got something that you're working on. And then, man, this, this third one is really important. You devote, which means prioritize, the time. You always have time for what you make your priority. We say we're busy, but we're only busy for things. We're only too busy to not do what we don't want to do. 
I'm not sure I said that right, but you guys, hopefully you know what I mean. See, the things that you want to do, you make time for. The things you don't want to do, all of a sudden you realize that you're busy. And, and so there's a big difference there in trying and training. Minimal commitment, wholehearted investment. And so when you're trying to do something, what ends up happening is, is that you give up when it gets too hard. When it gets too hard, you're just, you're just over and you're done. But when you're training, you, you don't act according to your feelings. Instead, you act according to your commitment. That, that's how you get past the hard times. Philippe, put this on the screen here for him. This is, again, I'm going to go back to the lion here. See, if you're training to go up against the beast, when it gets hard, you give up. But you know what's still going to happen? You're still going to have to face the beast. You're still going to have to go up against that thing that wants to devour you, that thing that you want to change. It doesn't want you to change. And if you're trying and every time it gets hard, you quit trying, that means you never grow, you never get strong, and you're never going to conquer that beast. But in training... You don't act according to your feelings. That means that when you feel like death or when, I, when I'm laying on the gym floor, you know, in the middle of the gym, not somewhere off to the side where it's, you know, private or, you know, what, I'm just sprawled out in the middle of everybody and I'm just completely done and exhausted. And David, my friend and trainer, is, you know, he's saying, come on, you know, Chris, get up. You know, you're in the middle of everything here. You kind of look like a mess, you know, like I, I'm not quitting because of the way that I feel. Instead, I act according to my commitment. See, my commitment is, a, is to train my body, is to get stronger, to be healthier, to live longer. So we, we've got to figure out, especially this feelings part, how do you get over your feelings? How do you conquer those feelings? Because the feelings is what puts us into this top sentence. Because my feelings feel like it's too hard. My feelings tell me that I can start tomorrow. When you're trying, you give up as soon as it gets too hard. And so another way for you guys to understand this is, is this. I really wanted to just equip you with different statements that would help you to understand the difference in your life between trying and training. So another one is that uh, trying is the effort that we put into becoming something, right? So... If I want to become something, I'm going to try and put effort into it. If I want to become a, a better dad, maybe I'll try and I'll put effort into it. But training, so you see, this is where there's freedom here. Okay, get, get ready for a freedom statement for you. Training is knowing your identity and walking in purpose and getting good at being you. So when you're trying at something, you're trying to become something. When you're training, you already are that something. You're just figuring out how to become better at it. So what do you want to be? Do you want to always be pursuing something? Or do you want to accept that, you know what? I'm already it. God made me in his image. I've already conquered the habit. I've already conquered the addiction. I've already conquered everything. Now all I have to do is get better at being me. Get better at being the person that God wants me to be. I don't want to keep trying to become something. That's exhausting. It's exhausting for everyone. Instead, to know that my identity is set in Christ, then all I have to do is get good at being me. I don't have to become anything. I already am enough. I just take out the I part, and I put the God part in, and I'm, I'm done. God, God meets me there. All of a sudden, there is a chance that I'm, I'm winning at life. And so, see, see winning at life, th this part here for you to understand here is winning at life is really all about your identity, and it's about your purpose. So your identity and your purpose is, is, is here. You, you, you know who you are. You know what God's done for you. You're just learning to become a better version of yourself. This trying to put effort into becoming something, that's somebody that doesn't know who they are. It's somebody that doesn't know their purpose. And so I, I hope that when you leave here today, I, I want you to think about what's my purpose, what's my identity. And I want you to think about, you know, just got one question for you here um, 
in, in closing, Philippe, put this last question here on the screen for him. Based on who you want to become, that's what this whole series has been about. Based on who you want to become, how are you going to train? What gear, what gameplay, and what time are you going to use? So are you going to try or are you going to train? Now, I, I really hope that, that putting this together for you, I hope that you're able to sit there, just like I started the message with. I hope you're able to say, I, I see how this matters to me. And, and if you don't, then I'll, I'll just try and sum it up for you again. You probably have something in your life that you just can't conquer. You just can't change. You just can't beat. And I'm here to let you know that all the effort that you've put into trying... I mean, good on you for putting the effort into it, but you don't have to keep putting effort into it. Instead, train, meaning you're already the athlete. Your identity is already secured in Christ. You're already enough. Train. That means get good with God. Train yourself how to talk to God. Train yourself how to open His Word. Train yourself how to believe the truth that He has for you rather than the lies that you're constantly fighting back in your own mind that are being said that you say about yourself. See, I I want you to, to, to let go of that pressure. You see, what happens is if you don't stop trying, then you carry with you those failures all through your whole life. Then what happens is that your identity, become, it becomes this. I'm not Pastor Chris who gets the opportunity to lead South Point Church. Because I've been trying for so long, I'm Pastor Chris who gets to leave South Point Church, but really who is also addicted to pornography. Or, or maybe for you, it's, it's you want to be a better dad, and, and it's, it, you could make the statement of, I am made to be an amazing father. I am just in training to become that amazing father. See, you could choose that, or you could choose the, 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 the trying lie, which says, I am an amazing father, maybe someday, because I'm going to keep trying for that. You know, in your marriage, you could say, you know, I, I'm going to try and have a better marriage with my spouse. But... Married people, anytime you're trying, that's tough. I'm going to try and have a better marriage with my spouse. I would rather claim that my marriage is a marriage in training. It's already sealed by God. It's already supported by Him. It's already promised. It's already something that God has, has my back on. So you know what? We're just a better marriage in training, learning how to be better. That's how I hope that that can work for you. And so we're, we're about to, the band's going to come out and they're going to sing. And the reason that we do this, we give you guys an extra time of worship is I just want you to have, have time, have a little bit of space and have a little bit of time to think about what we've been talking about. Th- think about where in your life are you trying so hard? Where are you just putting so much effort? And it just keeps returning back to you void. And I put the effort into it, nothing changes. Where, where's that at in your life? First, identify that. Once you've identified that, say, you know what, I'm going to stop trying so hard here. Because this guy on stage says that I'm I'm already enough. And so let me train myself to hear from God. And you know what, training starts at day one for everybody. You don't just start the best in the world at something. So your version of training today can be something as simple as saying, God, I've never, ever thought about speaking to you. But right now, I just, I'm tired of trying. And so I'm going to just let you know that. See that simple little prayer. You're training yourself to talk to God. Training yourself to hear from God. So I want to pray over us. And and this is the point where I trust that the Holy Spirit does in you uh, what I am not able to do, thankfully. And that the Holy Spirit will bring up in you these things for you to deal with and for you to work on. And so, Heavenly Father, we...